communism as an ideology has shaped much of the 20th century. Born from the writings of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels in the 19th century, it promised a classless, stateless society where the means of production were communally owned. The ideology saw its first major test with the Russian Revolution in 1917, leading to the formation of the Soviet Union. For decades, the USSR and its satellite states symbolized the global power of communism, a counterbalance to Western capitalism. However, with the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 and the subsequent collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, communism seemed to be on the wane. Yet, as the dust of the Cold War settled, some nations remained committed to this ideology. Before diving into which countries still adhere to communism, it's crucial to understand what communism means, both theoretically and practically. In theory, communism is a system where there is no private property. All property is communally owned, and each person contributes and receives according to their ability and needs. The state, in its ultimate form, withers away, leaving a classless society. In practice, however, communist states have often maintained strong centralized governments that control the economy and limit political freedoms. The disparity between theory and practice is stark, leading to the debate over whether any country has ever truly achieved communism as Marx and Engels envisioned it. Our journey begins in East Asia, with the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, better known as North Korea. Of all the remaining communist states, North Korea perhaps comes closest to embodying the traditional model of 20th century communism. North Korea is ruled by the Korean Workers' Party, which maintains an iron grip on all aspects of society. The country's official ideology, Zhuxie, emphasizes self-reliance and has been used to justify extreme isolation from the outside world. The North Korean economy remains predominantly state-controlled, with central planning dictating production goals and resource allocation. Private enterprise is severely limited, though some black market activity exists out of necessity. North Koreans face strict controls in their daily lives, the government tightly regulates information, restricts travel, and maintains an extensive system of political prison camps for dissenters. In 2018, a North Korean soldier named Oh Jong Song made headlines where he dramatically defected to South Korea by running across the heavily fortified demilitarized zone. His escape shed light on the harsh realities of life in North Korea, including widespread malnutrition and lack of basic freedoms. The most prominent country that claims to be communist is China, officially known as the People's Republic of China. The Communist Party of China has ruled the country since 1949, when Mao Zedong declared the founding of the PRC after a brutal civil war. Today, China is the world's second largest economy, with a blend of state-owned enterprises and private businesses. The Chinese Communist Party maintains strict control over the political system, the military, and the media, but the economy is largely capitalist in practice. This has led to debates over whether China can still be considered a truly communist country. While it retains the one-party rule characteristic of communist states, its economic system is far from the planned economy envisioned by Marx. Under President Xi Jinping, the Chinese government has tightened its grip on power, emphasizing the importance of the CCP in all aspects of life. Xi has reasserted the party's control over the economy and society while promoting the idea of socialism with Chinese characteristics. Despite these efforts, China's modern economy practices, including its vast wealth gap and growing capitalist class, complicates its identification as a truly communist country. Cuba, under the leadership of Fidel Castro, became a symbol of communist revolution in the Americas after the overthrow of the Batista regime in 1959. For decades, Cuba stood as a thorn in the side of the United States, promoting socialist ideas in the Western Hemisphere. Cuba's economy has traditionally been centrally planned, with the state controlling most industries. However, economic hardships following the collapse of the Soviet Union led to some market reforms in the 1990s and 2000s. Today, Cuba operates a mixed economy with both state-owned enterprises and a growing private sector. 
In 2021, Cuba saw widespread protests against the government, the largest in decades. Demonstrators voiced frustration with economic conditions, shortages of food and medicine, and restrictions on civil liberties. The government's response, including arrest of protesters and internet shutdowns, highlighted the tensions between communist control and popular discontent. Moving to Southeast Asia, we encounter Vietnam, a country that has undergone significant changes since the days of the Vietnam War while still maintaining Communist Party rule. Vietnam is governed by the Communist Party of Vietnam, which holds a monopoly on political power. The country officially describes its system as a socialist-oriented market economy. Vietnamese citizens have seen improvements in living standards and increased economic opportunities in recent decades. However, the government maintains tight control over media and political expression. Civil society organizers face restrictions, and dissent is often suppressed. The bustling streets of Ho Chi Minh City, formerly Saigon, offer a vivid illustration of Vietnam's unique blend of communism and capitalism. Here, one can find gleaming shopping malls and international brands alongside propaganda posters and images of Ho Chi Minh. This juxtaposition reflects the country's efforts to balance ideology commitment with pragmatic economic policies. Often overlooked in discussions of communist countries, Laos, officially the Lao People's Democratic Republic, remains under the rule of its economic party. Laos is governed by the Lao People's Revolutionary Party, which has held power since 1975. The country maintains a one-party system with no legal opposition. Like Vietnam, Laos has implemented market reforms while maintaining state control over key sectors. The country has seen significant economic growth in recent years, largely driven by foreign investment and natural resource exploitation. The construction of the China-Laos Railway, completed in 2021, exemplifies Laos' complex position. The project, part of China's Belt and Road Initiative, promises economic benefits, but has also raised concerns about growing Chinese influence and Laos' ability to repay the associated loans. While the countries discussed above are the most prominent self-proclaimed communist states, several other nations incorporate elements of communist ideology or maintain ruling communist parties. Venezuela While not officially communist, the country's Bolivarian Revolution under Hugo Chavez and Nicolas Maduro has incorporated socialist policies and rhetoric. Nepal The Nepal Communist Party has held power in recent years though the country maintains a multi-party democratic system. Sri Lanka The country has a significant communist political presence, though it operates within a democratic framework. As we conclude our global tour of communist states, it becomes clear that true communism, as envisioned by Marx and Lenin, is increasingly rare in the 21st century. Even among countries that maintain communist party rule, most have adapted their economic systems to incorporate market elements and private enterprise. North Korea stands out as perhaps the closest to a traditional communist state, maintaining rigid state control and rejecting most capitalist influences. However, its extreme poverty and dynastic leadership system deviate significantly from communist ideals. The reality is that pure communism has proven unsustainable in practice. Countries that have clung to orthodox communist economic models, like North Korea, have faced severe economic challenges and international isolation. Those that have adapted, like China and Vietnam, have seen significant economic growth, but at the cost of ideological purity. In the end, while the red star of communism may still fly over a handful of nations, its glow has dimmed considerably. The remaining communist states represent a spectrum of adaptation and reform, reflecting the challenges of applying a 19th century ideology to the realities of the 21st century world. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe.